walk into Michael Garman Galleries in Colorado Springs is to walk into Michael Garman's past. The homeless, the down and out, the street scenes from America's decaying cities are all a part of Michael's own experiences. What is beautiful is subjective, and only through the talented hands of Michael Garman does this harsh, tough landscape become a wonderful slice of Americana. Michael Garman is the storyteller sculptor. He uses wax instead of words to tell the story of the down and out. This former alcoholic has his own story to tell, a story about a vagabond turned businessman, a story about a street peddler turned marketing genius, a story about a storyteller sculptor that can be told best in his own words. I think a lot of this probably started out, or I, I probably began a lot of this when I was somewhere around five or six years old. My, my dad was a very, very fine amateur sculptor, painter. My mother was very, very um, artistic. Um, and they passed that on to my brother and myself. And we were always around drawing books and, and carving. And, and I began making these little pipe cleaner men probably when I was around five or six years old. And I'd wrap these pipe cleaners around. I learned anatomy, I suppose, really from looking at my dad's old old drawing books and, and, and trying to get these little pipe cleaner characters together. So I kind of just wrapped this, this pipe cleaners around. Then I began sewing clothes on my mother's sewing machine. Um, uh, made these little cowboy boots and leather cowboy hats. And then later I got into making little plywood forts that had, had jails and, 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 and cannon and all sorts of, um, of uh, neat little dollhouse things on them, but they were, they were little cavalry guys and, and, and cowboys. And I, I love these little, little, little fellas. I think a lot of what is happening right now started a long, long time ago, and I've just never totally gotten out of my childhood. And I don't intend doing it now. <laughs> These characters sitting on a bench and in the bars, uh, are they part of your past? Absolutely. They're characters that I played with and winoed with and, uh, and lived with in various parts of the country, in San Francisco and Philadelphia and all over South America. Um, they're conglomerates, they're parts and pieces, types of characters that I, that I, uh, I put together. You mentioned South America. You did spend some time in South America and Central America. Mm -hmm. I, I crossed the border one time in, in Mexico um, with uh, about $30 in my pocket with the intention of, of staying down there as long as that $30 would last. And I figured it'd be around two weeks. And I came back two years later. Uh, I just kept on going all the way through and I learned how to make money down there. I would, I would go into uh, uh, restaurants, um, uh, explain that I was trying to hitchhike my way through the, uh, the Central South America, and it, could I do any odd jobs, sweep the place out, wash some windows for, for a little bit of money? And they would they would always say, nope, there's there's no work, but please sit down and, and here's some here's some food. And I started doing that, um, uh, uh, going door to door to all the um, um, uh, businesses all throughout. And I made I made good money. I made fifteen twenty dollars a day, gringo uh, uh, equivalent. Uh, while I was traveling through there, and I slept in police stations and fire stations, and later I could even um, um, talk my way into sleeping into hotels for free. I never paid for a ride. It, I enjoyed the life very much, and it was it was something that that if you'd asked me what I wanted to do, uh, that would have been it. You know, sit in a truck and 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 watch the world go by. I, I I saw a lot of characters. I had to learn to read characters. I had to learn to um, to, to make my way through uh, various situations. So it was a tremendous learning ground for me. It was a very very interesting time. I I. Uh, that's my Ph.D. Got a Ph.D. in wino. One of the few around. <laughs> Michael Garman's miniature city landscapes create a complete mood. These ghetto dollhouses provide magical moments through illusionist techniques. Michael himself walks into a scene to bring life to his work. Like a peep show, you can spend hours with a piece and still be surprised. By the use of miniaturization, Michael draws in his audience and keeps them delighted. Fantastic thing happened in San Francisco. They were setting up an Andrew Wyeth show and pulling down a dollhouse show. I saw people passing up 
some of Henry Wyeth's beautiful, beautiful work, crawled over a, 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 a barrier and were on their knees looking at these empty doll houses and with, with fascination. And it really kind of just emphasized what I was trying to do with my miniature. That, that if I can show you some miniature and I get you inside, I can keep you there. I can draw your interest. And, and it, was a, it was a magical way to actually get you to look at, at, at this. When I view your, your uh, sculptures, it appears to me that I've been in some of those particular situations and scenes. Are you trying to show your audience themselves? Are you trying to show people what they are themselves? You know, I don't, I don't know. I think I'm just trying to pull myself out of a lot of these and, and really just trying to storytell sculpt. I feel like I'm an, I'm an entertainer sculptor. That's, uh, 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 that's an interesting question. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. I know exactly what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I just grab some wax and turn it loose, and, and if it comes out that way, that's, uh, um, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, I, I'm really just trying to story tell, I think, you know, put some, some drama in the, in the I, I'm a, I use a sculptural technique, but I feel like I'm, um, I'm a storyteller. Uh, uh, I enjoy filmmaking. I would love to be a filmmaker. I, I don't have the talent for that. I would love to be a writer. I can't write a lick. I enjoy John Steinbeck. I would love to be able to sculpt like uh, John Steinbeck wrote, that he can make you laugh and cry at the same time. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, I want to be serious with my work, but I also want that little, that humor there always. I enjoy it when people come up and look at a character and four or five people can say, that looks like Uncle Jed. No, that looks like, that looks like Harry down in Woodland. Uh, uh, so that they can identify with, with this single character, many, many different people. So it's a, it's a, nice, um, it's a nice general portrait of a type. Uh, do you try to depict your, your drunks as, as sort of victims of society? No, no, actually I don't. <clears throat> I think they've got a... Um, I think they've got a get through it feeling to it. Um, they're not, uh, they are, they're, they're, they're down. They're not totally out yet. Is this uh, sort of uh, uh, a sort of look back at your alcoholic days? And Absolutely. you are a recovered alcoholic. Yeah, exactly. And, and this, is, this is an area that I, that I went through that, that I'd like to be able to, to bring out in a positive way now and, and use it in a positive sense so that, so that it isn't a lost time, a, 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 a fully negative moment, uh, and, and a, a good de depiction, not a caricature of, of, of these guys and, and gals that, that, that I played with down there. This isn't a, uh, this isn't a put down. It's a, it's a, hey, come here and look, see, and I'll show you some, I'll show you some real people. These aren't all bad guys. They, uh, uh, they're, they're some very, they're some fantastic people. When you turn to look at your figures there, do you feel like uh, Gulliver in Gulliver's Travels? Oh yeah, I just, I, it's like going back and, and seeing my little characters again and being able to, uh, when I get in close with them, and I'm working really, really close with the whole scene, it is, it's a, uh, I get pulled into it. What the public doesn't see at Michael Garman Galleries is the business beyond the gallery walls a business that is as fascinating as his sculptures. This recovered alcoholic runs a multi-million dollar operation with over 40 employees. An accomplished art publisher, Michael Garman is challenging all artists to become businessmen and duplicate their work for the public to enjoy. What do you think of uh, this mass-produced art that you do? I philosophically believe in it, and I, I, I don't believe in original art. As, as solely one of a kind, one painting, one sculpture uh, art. And I really am kind of, I don't totally believe in, the, in the, uh, the, the limited edition without an open edition. I thank very much those artists that allow us to see their works in, in reproduction. We have techniques in today's uh, technological society that we didn't have 30, 40 years ago. I can reproduce what you're looking at in mass, in exact, fine, perfect little detail, every tiny prop and part and piece. So that that is, that is actually what I'm able to do now is reproduce this. This isn't a one of a kind, and I would not have it as a one of a kind. I want to have many of these out there so that people can enjoy them, 
I can get the 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 <laughs> the recompense from it. I can, but I can, like the writer, publish my work so that they can, uh, so that a lot of people can enjoy it. I, I use an analogy like, uh, how would you like John Steinbeck to have only turned out? 10 manuscripts and sold them for $150,000 each to, to collectors, private collectors, and have Ken Rowe forever taken off public consumption. You know, I would, I would be a devastating thing for us to, to, to have some of our great writers and our great works of, of, of film and our great uh, works of music limited to a few copies so that a few collectors could enjoy this. Um, I don't mind the collector, but I want an open edition of my piece so that I can have hundreds of thousands of a single character turned out. I may have a limited edition in bronze that will become a valuable collector's edition, but I also want that edition out there that you can buy for $25 and $30 and take home and put on your mantle and wake up every morning to. So I, I, I actually believe that, that what I'm doing is going to be the future of art. Um, whether, whether everyone else decides on it yet or not. How many writers actually know the art of publishing books? Once a book is written, a writer usually considers their job done. Michael Garman, the storyteller sculptor, is a complete craftsman from beginning to end. As engineer, he has designed the process of duplicating his sculptures. It is a complex process that still requires a lot of detailed handwork. I was a one-man operation for, oh, the first 15 years. I, I did the sculpting, the mold making, the casting, the painting, the selling, everything. So it was, um, it was a one-man operation for the, for the first, first years. How about uh, the, the media that you work in? This is microcrystalline wax. and. It's a petroleum byproduct, very inexpensive kind of a kind of a wax. I, I kind of have a love hate for it. I, I love wet clay or just a good old earth clay to, to, to work with. There's a life to it. When you when you press into it, it radiates and and uh, um, uh, it's 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 beautiful. I really enjoy a good clay. But I do I do most of my work now in wax because I can I can keep a piece up for years and 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 play with it and change it and fix it. I really enjoy wax now and, and do almost everything in the, in the, uh, the microcrystalline wax. How about these little uh, bottles and newspapers and uh, garbage cans that you have? Absolutely everything is, 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 is made here. We've made uh, 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 all that's cast here. There's nothing I allow outside the, the, the building, actually. There's some, there's some frames uh, uh, made, but, but I, I enjoy the control, and I think it's a necessary part to have the control. That's part of the, 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 the art the art technique, I think, is that keeping, if I'm going to publish my work, I have to have a very, very close hand in seeing that it comes out properly. In spite of the volume that you produce, it still isn't production line art. That's, that's right. That's right. It's, it's, uh, uh, I want to turn out as much as, uh, as I can, but it, it, ha it, has to be, it, has to be, it has to be quality. It has to be uh, very, very uh, 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 perfectly done. Do you have quality control? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got a, I've got some fantastic people that, 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 that work for me that um, uh, really have, have I'm, I'm very proud of all of us, you know, in, in, our, in our, our, the techniques that we've worked out because we haven't had any schools to go to and we haven't had anyone to, to go through. We've just worked these methods out all, of our, all, all over the years until they've, we've honed them down and now we seem to know what we're doing. Michael Garman is in his prime in terms of his art form. He has refined a successful technique for creating and duplicating his work. He has the staff and financial success to create whatever his imagination desires. His current project is a full city landscape which will allow you to walk between the buildings. It will be a complete environmental moment. In this, in this large scene that you're going to see, you're going to when you walk into it, you're going to walk into a total environment. It's going to be 21 buildings, a whole neighborhood city block, 
50 feet wide by 50 feet wide by 32 feet high. The brick horizon is going to go around 17 feet high. The rest of it is going to be this huge, beautiful dome that will act as a, as a projection screen so that Fish Island's projectors will project thunderstorms and sunrise and star constellations and, and uh, uh, all sorts of effects going on up there the, the, as the thunderstorm actually is over the top of you. Little mist jets are going to drop uh, uh, fine mist down on top of you to, to titillate you and get you into the scene. Hundreds of speakers will, will uh, have traffic going in back of you and in front of you. You'll, see, you'll hear television sets coming out from the bar and up in the apartments and the jukeboxes and guys yelling up at the top and, and answering at the, uh, at the bottom and all those, that little, all those street sounds that, that, that you would hear uh, are all going to be done with this beautiful computerized um, sound system. Then there will be hundreds of the hundreds of the illusions where you'll see sculptural figures actually the characters step out of these sculptural figures, walk over to the bar, get a drink, come back and step into their sculptural figures again. You'll see yourself snuck into these scenes by you having stepped on a pressure pad in a particular area, uh, being reduced then set into the scene in a five to six second delay so that you're looking inside this scene and all of a sudden you see yourself. So that, that there, there you are inside this scene in a, in a bar or a cafe or a, or a barber shop, you know, wondering how you got in there. So, so it's gonna be like a big sinful Disneyland uh, uh, kind of a situation that, that, that will have a full environmental moment connected with it. What do you, what do you see your future as when, when you've completed all that you've that it, that's in your mind. I don't ever see completing it, I guess. I, I don't think that far ahead. Maybe that's why there is a certain amount of success to it because I don't think about being successful. I don't try to be successful. I first try to throw some, some love into this piece and I can, I can then feel really guaranteed that the success will come. I think that really, that, that re it goes hand in hand. My aspirations are not, I keep things pretty simple. Um, what I really want to do is, is just, is just um, create a, a beautiful, ugly, interesting little, little uh, entertainment world that uh, um, sculptural theater is, is what I'd really like to be able to, to say I developed. Disney developed uh, uh, cartooning it into an art form um, uh, and, and, and um, um, carnival into an art form and I'd like to be remembered as, as developing dollhouse into an art form. So you'll live with your friends here for as long as you possibly can? Oh absolutely, I've got, I've got, I got people to pull out and things to say and have them to say uh, that I don't, that I'm just beginning to learn how to play with my technique. I spent 11 years or 16 years actually developing this technique. Now I feel like I can not relax, but now I can, I can begin to use it. I can begin to actually, actually turn it loose, um, uh, to tune it, to develop these characters, to develop my ability to, to have them speak through it. And I've got a whole technique of dramatization to, to learn. I don't, I don't know how to, how to do that yet, to, to, to script this piece in such a way that I take you paragraph by paragraph by chapter and you come away from it with a good, good single thought, like having read a good novel or a good, good, good short story. So these, these characters then are replacing your childhood pipe cleaner characters. Yeah, they are. They, they really are. They, uh, I, never, I never could get away from the little rascals.